is a, Carolyn Taylor Walker, sorry, um, is a UK trained doctor who's been working in Torquay for the past eight years. Uh, she's a senior lecturer at Deakin University and the owner of Ministry of Skin. A dedicated doctor, she leads a luxury zen-like clinic in Torquay, just the sound that makes me feel good. Specialising in skin cancer, aesthetic and wellness, it's aesthetics and wellness, Dr Taylor Walker is dedicated to blending medicine and functional wellness. This is such a big area, um, it just, it's, over, it's taking over the US by storm at the moment, where doctors are combining exactly that, the, the clinical side with the wellness side of it. And this functional medicine is really where we want to be heading. And it's just wonderful that um, we've got Caroline here doing that. She's keen on wellness. She respects the balance required of the gut hormones, toxins, the exposure to them, stress and nutrition on the skin's health, along with traditional medical approaches and a scientific aesthetic. She makes everything possible in the most non-toxic, sustainable <laughs> way. Please welcome Caroline. So we all kind of do it from the inside and working on the skin. But today, I'm actually going to talk about the vagina. Hope <laughs> 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 I hope press the right button. Yeah, okay. So, on a side note, the vagina is, some, is a topic that really annoys me. It's really taboo, and it shouldn't be. We're quite kind of ashamed about it. We can't even say it. And, and we've all got one. We should be kind of shouting out about it. So I'm going to try and empower you over your vagina. Um, <laughs> I have a bit of a confronting warning to start with because I might obviously bring up some terms or show some pictures. It might be confronting for you because it's not often people just, you know, shout the word out in front of you, then they show you some photos. <laughs> um, but that's the whole part of my plan. I want you to start feeling empowered by your vagina. I want you to shout out about it. I want you to talk about it because if we're not doing that, who does? You know, we're, we're the ones that have it. We need to, you know, inspire women to not hide behind it. And my other aim of the talk is to um, tell you something about your vagina to take home. And now everyone here who's got one, your vagina's gonna get old, I'm sorry. So I thought I would tell you what is normal and how to rescue you from that, so you can get a bit more comfortable. Okay, here we go. So, Um, and had a little bit of leakage, and 
and I'd sit all day and stuff till I smelled it. And then I'd watch the movie and this young guy, you know, slowly giving some flowers. And then I went to bed with my husband and half of having childbirth just didn't work, a bit uncomfortable, a bit painful like it. There's real mixed emotions that occur then during the day and the vagina is really important to us and it can really influence us in regards to our moods, it drives our thoughts, it drives our feelings, it drives our comfort, our actions. I should be doing a Joe exercise here now, I'm getting you all to stand up and like, you know, loose at the vagina whilst you're sitting there. I'm sure some of you can feel it now, just me talking about it. You know, it's really, it's really in intuitive with us. Now, um, a lot of us seek a partner, and, and why is this? And as I've just mentioned, it's because our genitals tell us to. And how do we know when we find someone? And it's because our genitals tell us. So whether you class yourself as male, female, whether you're um, more kind of intersex, ambiguous genitalia, if you've got a sexual organ, it will be driving your behaviors and thoughts. Now, on the other note, um, yeah, the vagina's not very well portrayed in media and society, and I think that's why we have some kind of issues with it. And it's also connected a lot in regards to our personal exposures, our experiences, and our upbringings. And it can be something that someone could really manipulate you in a way that's quite terrible, and then it's also a way that you can get extreme pleasure from it. So it's maybe that's our wonder. It can be you know, quite conflicting. So I've only got 10 minutes, but it's going already. <laughs> um, but your vagina can really impact you negatively and positively. So I'm just going to show a little bit of artwork here. So just to find <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm going to say it. It's called the compass. She, she wrote it, I don't know. Um, now, the wording about vagina is negative as well. Now, men have kind of cock and penis, really strong words. We have this word. Like, we can't even say it. There's real negative connotations around it. So this is quite um, interesting. She wanted it to stand out as a colourful kind of representation of female genitalia. She wanted to stand out as a visual uh, sign of empowerment and equality for all women, including cisgender, transgender, gender non-conforming, with each piece being very individual as each we are as uh, humans. But what does it mean? Is it just statements that we will have different genitalia? Is it representation against the horrific act of female genital mutilation? Is it that parallel between sex, pornography, and um, the porn industry? Or again, is it that old age tie that women you know, being at home subservient to men with just a few coins in their purse? So there's, there's a lot there that's quite interesting. Look, I could go on and talking about this and for ages, <laughs> but I, I want to give you something that you can take home about. So at my clinic, oh, does it knock off? Oh, we'll start there. It, it has like a, yeah, goes one after the other, that's fine. But at my clinic, I think, what can I do? At my clinic, we mainly work with aging. A lot of, um, a lot of athletes are aging, so I thought I would kind of tell you about the vagina. So if I put this beautiful face up of a 20-year-old, um, as you can see, her skin is lovely and smooth and plump and dewy and moist, and it works really well as a barrier. It's doing exactly what it should do. Um, now, if I put the picture up of the 80-year-old, you can see she's still beautiful with wonderful stories in her skin, but the skin's very different. It's a lot thinner, it's a lot drier, it's lax, and you can see that that might be starting to cause some irritations or some problems for her. So as you can guess, what happens to your vagina? <laughs> this is what happens. So, um, just to go my next slide um, But yeah, I want to, the right reason again is to kind of get you to start talking about it. So, here we can see, it's going to do it together again. It's supposed to be kind of keeping on your toes, the other one together. But yeah, so here's a 20 year old vagina. So, similar to that 20 year old's face, what you can see, the vagina is how it should be. It's beautiful and soft and it's moist and it's dewy and it's functioning and as it should do. And then if you can see the 70 year old vagina there, you can see instantly it's different. The skin's very dry, it's very um, very tight, it's not working very well, it's very irritated. And we need to know this because with normal aging the vagina changes. You, you can't hide from this, it's going to happen. And the reason why it happens is it all comes down to hormones. So as we age, our female hormones start reducing and then obviously when they finish we've gone through the menopause. When we haven't got our female hormones, all our skin everywhere on the body changes and it generally becomes thinner, drier and um, acts less as the barrier and function that it should do. So the changes that you can get are the long list here, so little things like dryness, irritation, increased urine infection, itching, reduced central sensation, arousal, pain, clinical brush, leaking, incontinence, scar tissue. And these are just the normal ones. And you know, earlier, this is quite interesting as well, because earlier I had a talk and was talking about her nine pound baby kind of squirting out after two hours and spoke about the blood loss. How was your vagina? You know, we don't even mention it in normal conversations, so. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer. Don't have to answer. Um, 
Um, <laughs> so there's lots of issues, yeah, just the normal ones, but we don't seek help, and that's what I want you to do. The main thing is to talk about it, but there's some help out there. I'll rush through quick because I'm falling a bit behind time. But first of all, I want you to talk about it. My biggest thing is please open up, talk about it, tell someone. If they're saying that they don't agree with you, it's because they're lying. They're hearing that C-U-N-T word. They're feeling shameful about it. But if we don't talk about it, no one does. Nothing changes. You can see a physio. They can help with the um, pelvic floor exercises, help to tighten up the pelvic floor, tighten up the vagina, support and the bladder support. Um, if you're struggling with dryness, there's lubrications that you can use to solve that. We can, in, we can use hormones, we can use those um, locally, just on the vagina, we can add them topically, patches, oral, and there's herbal supplements as well that can help to naturally um, increase your, your natural hormones. But the other thing I just quickly wanted to mention that we have the clinic is the laser. So the laser is something that um, basically treats all of those issues that I said are gonna have, happen as you get older, and it works very similar if we use the laser on the face. So the laser has a heat element, and that heat basically stimulates the collagen and elastin around the vagina, in the pelvic floor muscles, and around all the supporting structures um, to tighten them and lift them and improve the quality of the, the skin in that area. So it makes it a lot more smooth, soft, and moisture a lot better. But as I said, I'm running a bit out of time, probably because I've said vagina too much and been enjoying saying nothing. Um, but my take-home message is basically shout out about the vagina. You know, it's it's an issue, it's part of your life. I want you to listen to it, I want you to open up about it, I want you to talk about it, I want you to see, you to see doctors about it. I want you to know treatment exists, and one of the greatest ones around at the moment that's pain-free is the laser. Um, but if you do want to find out more, then I am here for the rest of the afternoon, have a chat to me, come to our booth, have a look on our website. If you're a bit, don't want to talk about it out here, then um, <laughs> you want to see on, the, on the stage, and come and have a chat to me at the clinic. So um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I hope that's been really useful for you and that you enjoy the rest of your afternoon here with these inspirational women.